Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xan Talk Show. Today we are going to do three things. The first thing is a demonstration of Xafly keys for Emacs users. Xafly keys. Okay, that's the first thing. It will be maybe maybe twenty minutes. Then I'm gonna talk about mathematics, Bio Gospel. Uh, Bio Gospel Mathematics and Conway Scheme of Life. That's Cellular Automata. So if you are a programmer, you will be very much interested, and in,、uh, some mathematics. Okay.、Uh, Bio Gospel is a well-known mathematician, and he is a he is a hacker. He is the first, the you know he is the he is the guy who kind of brought up the original hacker community. Hacker at Massachusetts、uh, Institute of Technology (MIT). So Bill Gasper and Richard Stallman, they are kind of in the same、uh, group in AI research department at MIT in the seventies or eighties. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that guy. So first of all, let's do Xafly keys. Okay,、uh, I'm gonna do demo of Xafly keys. Okay, first of all, this is my keyboard. This is Glove AT keyboard.、Uh, you can visit my website, search for Xali Glove AT. I have a review.、Uh, Glove AT keyboard, okay, fantastic. And over there, it's Ultimate Hacking keyboard. I also have a video review. It's also great.、Uh, you can find on Xali dot info. Okay, so that's about my keyboard. Let's switch screen. Uh, and let's talk about Xafly Keys Emacs, okay? And also, I have a Discord. If you guys don't know, so join Discord. You can find the Discord link at xali dot info. Okay, so here is my homepage Xal Code, and the Discord. You can find the Discord link there. Okay, it's updated every month.、Uh, if you are here, say hi. Okay, so now let's do. Let's demo Xafly keys. Okay, so Xafly keys it's for Emacs users. So if you don't, I mean Emacs is a text editor, a very powerful one, like VI Vim, uh, or VS Code. So if you are, you know, I no need introduction. So I recommend Emacs. Now, but however, Emacs has got a major problem is that the key binding. So if you want to move a Word forward or backward, move the cursor. You have to do Control B to wait. Control B, yeah, is move backward. Control F is move forward. Then, if you want to move by word, it's Alt F. Okay, I disable the key, but Alt F. So basically, the keys are very com very complex. For example, if you want to open a file. That's Control X, Control F, you know that asks you to open the file. So the keys are very convoluted, and、uh, if you are a programmer, you are going to have develop RSI. It's gonna hurt your hands. Now, lucky for me, I have this fancy Batman keyboard, Glove eighty. So it helps a lot, but still, it's very cumbersome. So soft light keys is the idea that. You know, do away with this complicated key binding. It's a model. It's a key binding system. So in Emacs, for example, right now I'm using Xafly keys, and in the pink window you can see as I move, as I press any key, you can see the command shows up on the pink window. Can you see that? Yeah, the command shows up there, and the keystroke I pressed to do that command is also shows. I'm using a Vora keyboard layout. So, for example, I want to move up two paragraph. I press that. I press that. Press that. Press that. It just, you know, move up paragraph. So the command is xa beginning of line or block, or xa end of line or block. So you 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 can see. Look at my look at my right hand. You know, it's one single key press. I don't have to control something. If I want to move cursor by word. For example, to the right or left, I can just do that, you know, right or left, left, right, and the command is forward word and backward word by a single key. There's no Control F or Alt F something. 
Okay, and if I want to say delete this paragraph, I can just press a key, you see it's gone. Now I want to undo, press a key, it's undone. You see, those commands are called delete current text block and undo, you see. Let's try again, delete. Now let's say, say I want to delete multiple paragraphs. So I just hold this key, you see, then undo, undo, you know, undo all the way. Undo, yeah, okay, there. So the idea is that you don't have to hold control meta. So it's a model like VI or Vim, it's key binding. Now, so why don't I just use Vim emulation, like the evil mod? Well, the problem with Vim is that Vim, you know, the, the way that the Vim VI's key binding is historical. So it's not someone sit down and decide and design it and saying that, okay, so to delete the paragraph, let's say to delete the current line, you know, the most efficient key would be this finger because this is the most powerful finger. So they design all the key binding according to that. No, it's not like that. VI is through history, you know, it's, it's complicated. And uh, so it's not uh, optimal, it's not optimal. So therefore in soft light keys, you, the key binding is more optimal. Hello guys, hello, great to see you guys. Do you think Emacs key binding will cause RSI even with an ergonomic keyboard? Okay, that's one question. Uh, man, you changed display, what display? Uh, good evening, good evening. So if you are using a ergonomic, a very, you know, uh, Batman keyboard, a very radical design ergonomic keyboard and expensive, 300, 400, that helps a lot. So the question is, will you develop RSI if you use an ergonomic key, keyboard with the default Emacs? So that depends, you know, depends on how much you type, how, what's your typing habit, you know, uh, and also, also that depends on whether you turn on sticky key. Sticky key is one of the best thing, okay, that, for example, to press control F, if you have sticky key on, that means you con press control first, release it, then you press F. You don't have to hold control, then press F, release F, and then on hold control. So sticky keys, I highly recommend it, okay? It's available on Mac, on Windows, on uh, Linux. But let's go back to uh, talk about soft light keys, okay? So soft light keys, let me show you the source code. So here's the source code. So there are about 4,000 lines of code now, and it's available on GNU Elpa. So the home page, you can just search for Xaflai keys, you'll find it. And it's also on GitHub, and it's on GNU Elpa repository. So it's part of the Free Software Foundation's GNU repository, okay? So, so that's a basic concept about Xaflai keys. Here's the home page, so you can see, uh, here's a friend who sent me this photo. You know, he's learning stuff like this. This, this is like seven years ago. Uh, and with cheat sheet, so this is basically stuff like keys. And here is a cheat sheet of the key binding. So it's available for QWERTY keyboard, for Vorac keyboard, for Comat. You, you can click to switch for Comat, DH, or for Walkman. So it's available for many, for about 10 layouts, including German layouts and, and so on. So the idea is that you don't have to press control or meta anymore. Hello, hey, Fanta. Oh, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Economic stimulus. Thank you, Alan. Alan, Alan is a great guy. <clears throat> Alan, I, 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 uh, Alan sent me $2,000 donation, okay? Uh, so that is a huge sponsor for Star Talk Show. Huge. $2,000. And also Dion, also Dion has sponsored me uh, $2,000. So those are, uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you a lot. Uh, okay, so back to soft light keys. So the idea is like Vim, it's a modal mod. The idea is that you don't have to press control or meta uh, that will create, you know, give you RSI. You know, so I've been, I'm a touch typer since 1988. I type on mechanical typewriter back then, 
I love typing. That was actually data entry was my job. I did that for two years in my job as a secretary. So a salesman, they will dictate, you know, dear something client, you know, uh, if you want to some something, something salesman, you know, th so they speak, I type in real time. So I did that. So I'm a touch typist. I never had a problem until 2005. 2005 is the year I started to have RSI, like I like tingling. Um, and eventually I discovered that's before, uh, wait, that, that was, um, that's the, the cause is because I was using a laptop keyboard for over one, two years, exclusively on a Mac iPad, you know, Mac laptop. So that was the cause. Then, you know, anyway, that's my history of RSI. So, and back then, even up to that time, 2005, I'm not, I'm, I'm using the default Emac keys. So to open a file is like control X, control F, you know, to open the file. Uh, and to undo is, well, undo is a lot of keys, but you know, one of the keys is control shift underscore, you know, anyway. anyway. Um, so soft like keys. Okay. Now let me demo. Now let me, de <laughs> let me demo, um, install it. Okay. So I'm using soft like keys. It's fantastic. Let me go over a little bit about the design of the keys. Okay. So in general, the right hand side, you know, these three fingers, you see this, this, um, let's see, can you see it? Yeah. So you see these three fingers that control the arrow. So inverted T arrow on the, on your right hand side. Then above those two fingers, uh, U and O is the left, go to left by word or go to right by word. So that's that. So for example, arrow keys. Okay. So arrow up, down, left, right. Let's magnify right. So let's, so right, left, up, down. Then if you want to go by word, it's that, that. And if you want to go move by paragraph, so I, we demonstrated before. So you see, I can hold it down and it's like, you don't even have to go to press page up or page down. You know, you can just move by paragraph. Fantastic. And so that's all left. That's all right hand. Cursor movement and also some selection, for example, if I want to select the whole paragraph, I press six. If I want to select again, press six, six, you see. If I want to cut, it's a left hand uh, X on QWERTY, okay? Cut, you see. Undo is right hand again. So in general, the right hand is moving cursors. They, you know, and the left hand is for deleting uh, deleting and modifying uh, text. For example, let's say I want to delete this paragraph, the left hand, you know, the left hand quality G. Delete again, press again, okay? Undo is right hand, undo, undo. So you kind of alternate. So basically on the left hand, so if you want to delete by word to the left, that, 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 okay? If you want to delete by right, that, 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 you see? So now undo, 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 undo. You see, so kind of in general, the left hand is modifying, deleting any text. Right hand is moving cursors, okay? So that's a basic. So now let's install, let's start a new Emacs. Okay, let's go to PowerShell and uh, let's install a new Emacs. I mean, yeah, let's install uh, soft like keys starting from scratch, okay? So let's go to my uh, .emacs. So let's start Emacs. So you can see GCM, which means this is PowerShell. G GCM means finding a command. So it's equivalent to Unix, which, okay. Uh, the, the command, the full name for G GCM is get command, I think. Yeah, that's a full name. By the way, Alan, when I was learning PowerShell, Alan was the one telling, telling me, you know, I was asking, what's the PowerShell command for, for the Unix switch? And Alan told me that. So anyway, GCM Emacs, you can see I have Emacs installed and let's launch Emacs, but this time 
dash Q, that means do not start with any init file. So we can do that. You see, so we got a, you know, plain GNU Emacs up there. Okay, now to quit is control X, control C. Okay, let's quit that. So start Emacs again. Now this time L is for load, dash L. So I want to load my own init file. So let's create it here. So open new file. Let's see, let's say, um, save it, init.el, x init.el, okay, override, uh, I don't want to override, so there's already, oh, there's already x init, <laughs> okay, because I tried to do that, okay, so, so this this file is at this file path. So we want to start Emacs, Emacs dash Q, don't load in any init, then dash L, dash L means load init, okay, at this location, okay. Uh, we can use tilde for home page, okay. So this is a command you want to launch. And let's say, let's comment those out. Okay, so let's launch Emacs. Paste, do it. There it is, okay? Now, quit, control X, control C, okay? Now, let's modify the init so that, first of all, we want to load, oh wait, let's install Safari keys from scratch, remember? Okay, let's do that. So right now the init is empty because it's all coming out. So first of all, start Emacs. This is like when you, you know, when you begin Emacs. Let's do this quickly because we're gonna talk about other fun things, and I'm gonna read you guys comments. Oh, uh, what happened? Uh, I magnified by mistake, so large, but no. I have a hard time to uh, magnify. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cancel. How do you uh, magnify? This idiotic Google. Let's just do it here. What the uh, chat is now gone? Top chat, chat, live chat, okay. Uh, pop out chat, okay. So back, the chat is back, okay. Back to Emacs, <coughs> yeah. So we are trying to start Emacs. There it is now. <coughs> so when you start Emacs, you want to install soft like keys okay so you call the command meta x oh god it's so small tiny so you say list packages meta x list packages okay there it is there is your packages now in emacs 29 you can press Control alt and scroll up to magnify the font for all buffers system wide okay so that's control alt scroll up okay so anyway here it is this package is now search for soft like keys control x xa there it is so there it is from then gnu okay so you press enter to hit to open that uh uh and yeah. Then you just go to this window, tab, click install. Uh, yes, okay. So it's gonna install it. Now actually, where is it installed? It actually installed in my .emacs, I think. Uh, let's look, Alpa. Yeah, there it is, it installed there. Anyway, so let's, we can, so let's open it. So here's a file, open it, copy the file path, close, 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 close. Now let's put the file path here, okay? So we're gonna, so in 
so in your init file, all you have to do is say load file, uh, load file, uh, and uh, here is your file path. Okay, load file the that file path. Okay, you load software keys. Actually, you can say require. But anyway, let me just go on. So, and uh, yeah, actually, you can just say require. And then all you have to do is you have to say a layout. Software like key set layout. If you are a normal person, you just say quality. Then you have to put this sign software like keys one. That means turn it on. Okay. So load the file. Actually, you don't need it because require will do it. Anyway, so here is our new init file. Okay, now let's go back to Emacs. Now close that Emacs. Let's restart and with that init file. Do it. Now let's see if Softlight -like key is working. Now I don't have to press any control. I just press the right hand. Let's see if it moves closer. There it is. Fantastic. Now I can magnify. Uh, wait, yeah, magnify. Let's control, control, alt, scroll up. You see, now Xaflat key is installed. I don't have to press any control or meta. So you, I can select the whole paragraph. I can copy the whole buffer, open a new, uh, open, o open a new, paste it. You see, we pasted that paragraph actually. Uh, close it. So copy all, new buffer, paste. There it is. Anyway, so now I can delete the left word to the left or delete word to the right, or I can move cursor. Actually, let's magnify uh, one more time. Where is the Emacs? Let's control alt. Let's make it bigger. So I can uh, what? Control G to quit. Okay, so yeah, so I can delete the line from the cursor to the end. There it is. There's no so I don't have to press any control in any of that. So there it is. We just installed it. Okay, so I think that's so let's close Emacs. So that I think that concludes the demo of soft like keys. So there is tutorial you can go through. There is a short intro if you just read the home page. What does the command mod do? What does the insert mod do? And uh, how do you call some of the frequently used commands such as switch buffer, find file, open file, split panes, you know, some of the simple things everyone needs to do, you know, introduction. Then there is tutorial, there is customization, there is, um, and there is key binding. If you are using one of these fancy keyboard, let's see, yeah, you can see, you know, I have some uh, specialized key binding you can use, I mean, as a choice. Then there's a history. Why do I create? When did I create it? Why? And so on. Okay, that's it for soft like keys. 25 minutes, not too bad. Let's see what you guys are saying. When is the last Daniel? Daniel W. Daniel W. Which Daniel are you? When is the last time you watched Star Trek? No, that must be long ago. Well, I mean, I don't have a TV since year 2000, so I watch YouTube. So Star Trek, so usually I just watch clips. Um, but, but I haven't watched Star Trek for a long time. And, you know, since 2010, the whole classic sci-fi movies, they got, they became rotten because the Zuma generation, you know, they started to do their things. So, you know, especially that includes Star Wars. Oh, hey, hey, hello, Daniel Wood. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Wood from Canada, Alan from California, 
and uh, uh, Krista and uh, Hank. Hello, Hank from United States, Midwest, I believe. Be a gospel. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Unless you guys, are, let's move on to the next topic. Mathematics. Fantastic. Okay, so stuff like this, yeah, we done. Uh, this is, you know, the whole thing for stuff like this is for Kim Possum. Kim Possum. <laughs> a programmer he's writing he's creating a new lisp language so anyway let's so i'm done with this uh any file close 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 and uh yeah this is sound like keys go back close sound like his source code and what is this saw emacs blog uh we did i did a lot of things you can check out and uh, back to Xa Talk Show, let's talk about mathematics. Bill Gosper. Now, Bill Gosper is a fantastic mathematician. He's a hacker, okay? So, Bill Gosper, so first of all, for example, you can look at Wikipedia. Here, there's an entry. You know, here's, this is a guy. He's pretty old now, age 80 now. So, that's Bill Gosper. He's a hacker. He's a nerd, okay? He's a, a, one of the prototype of the nerd, nerd. He, you know, he's... At you know, he's Richard Stallman generation at MIT, an artificial researcher. He's a mathematician, but but he's into programming and computing, and in particular, he's into hacking. <laughs> you know, a type of programming activity you guys, you know, many of the C type of people love. You know, like little little trick, little bit manipulation, so you can multiply faster. You know, bit did diddling. You know, the bit operators, you know, that spread like a virus to all other languages, like bit shift, you know, bit shifting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have a few people loves that, you know, I, 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 uh, the, the, the wit guy comes to mind and several others and hot dog and, and mug covert, you know, they, they like that, you know. Anyway, he's a hacker. He's he's one of the best ones. He's the original hacker that founded the hacker community that basically created the word hacker, okay? Bill Gasper. And he's not just a hacker. He's not he also worked with Donald Gnuth, you know. So, you know, so that's the, that's the, this generation of hacker, real hacker, the original hacker. And he made many contributions uh in many ways, that's very interesting to us. Okay, he, uh, for example, let me show you a few gospel algorithms, gospel hash life. You know this, this algorithm. You know, so he, many of the things that's named after him. You know, so he's an accomplished uh, computer scientist and mathematician. So you have gospel curve, uh, gospel algorithm, and hash life, hash life. And gospel glider gun. That's amazing. Okay, that's about game of life. So anyway, that's a guy. Uh, and I'm gonna show you. Let's see uh, some of the math. Math. So the thing he has done, you can kind of divide it to two categories. Okay, I don't really know the biography of this the guy very well, so I might made me some mistakes. Forgive me. So, but I'm just going through. What I know about this guy, Bill Gosper, a great um, mathematician. Okay, so he, so what he has done, he has done can be divided into two kind of sections. One is mathematics. Okay, so let me sh first of all show you the the traditional mathematics part. Okay, look at this page. Okay, so that's that's what you know. That's some of the identities he found uh, and let's page down okay so there's so many page down page down co very complicated identities okay so you you don't even you know you even i i i don't understand half of it you know <laughs> understanding like of course i understand what does this formula mean but but how does it work or is it true i have no idea Okay, that requires a specialized mathematician in analysis in number theory to actually know. So, all, so many of these or all of them is unknown. It's new. 
you cannot solve it by Mathematica, for example. You know, let, let's start Mathematica because we are going to do it. You know, you type this in Mathematica, Mathematica doesn't know the answer. But you, you, but I, I can tell, I did the first one, this is true. Because if you try numerical values, it comes, comes out closer and closer. So this one, for example, it says limit n to infinity. Then you have this product, pi over 2 octan n times pi over 2 octan n plus 1 times and so on, so on, until pi over 2 octan 2n. Okay, so you multiply all this together to infinity, okay, as n approaches infinity. The result is 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 the 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 pith root of four. <laughs> so that means four raised to the power of one over pi. Okay. So this is you know this is just incredible, incredible. Okay. And I typed this in Mathematica yesterday. It doesn't it doesn't know the answer. So he has lots of the, the point is that he has lots of these um let me show you a few. Let's go down. So octan, you know, summation, tangent, and here is a hyperbolic a tangent. <laughs> Arc, you know, a t n, a t a n h. That's hyperbolic tangent, a uh, arctangent function. Okay, which is defined by, you know, e plus e divided by two, something like that. You can look up hyperbolic arc tangent. So, you know, some of the, these equations this is amazing, okay? It so this these are his discoveries and uh, many of them are not known to other mathematicians, you know, so they are not they are not known to humanity. So, I'm trying to work out, you know, I'm trying to document some of these Okay, so this so uh, incredible. Okay, so these are some of the some. This is this page is just some of them, like twenty of them. He's got lots of more, um, and he he's a pioneer in computer algebra system, like Wolfram language. Okay, let so anyway. So let me show you Wolfram language and show you some some of these. Okay, so 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 this part is what he has done as part of traditional mathematics, his accomplishments, you know, we could say, you know, all this, all this extremely complicated formula. It takes even some time to even type them up, up you know. So there are pages of them, pages. And, and these are done by Maxima, I think, I'm not sure. So you can see this syntax because he's a pioneer in computer algebra system, so he also write, you know, the code in this. He's he's a master of. He's he's one of the founder. He's one of the biggest Lisper, okay, comparable to Paul Graham. I mean, even before Paul Graham, he's like almost like previous generation. Paul Graham is a guy who, you know, who who created Hacker News, who created the Hacker funding company. You know, he wrote. A program, a Yahoo online e-store back in year two thousands, and sold to Yahoo for million or billions of dollars. That's how he become very rich, Paul Graham, and he's a big Lisp fan. And uh, so Bill Gosper is uh, another, you know, one of the greatest giant in Lisp community. He's, you know, so these are written in Mac Lisp, I think, in the nineteen seventies or or eighties. Uh, so anyway, so you you go through these formulas, just amazing, amazing, you know, of them. So I'm kind of going through them one by one and document what they are. Uh, so let me let's try the first one. I tried this, you know, first one. Let let me show you the first one, okay? Um, in Wufam language, okay. So let's see where is my Wufam language, okay? So there it is. Open a new document. Let's evaluate three, shift enter. Okay, let's magnify so you can see. So now let's type the first one. 
Okay, we're gonna do that. Then let me talk about. So that's the part of mathematics. Bio Gospel is known for. You can read in Wiki Wikipedia. Wikipedia will say. Um. Uh, we will mention some of these. Now the other interesting to many of you know this. This mathematics is very hard if you are not a professional mathematician. <laughs> this doesn't mean much to you. You cannot appreciate it, you know. And you know, so you have to be. You have to know calculus. Then you kind of like are dazzled by it. But you have to be a professional、uh, analysis to actually know what is actually their significance. So anyway, that's esoteric. But but Bill Gospel has done lots of other that's more interesting hacker or computing things to us. Okay, for example, this this curve, this curve, you know, you, you might call it a fractal, but it's a it's you know the technical is called space filling curve. Okay, this is one of the most beautiful Gospel snowflake. Okay, one of the most beautiful, and you can it it is done recursively. Essentially, you replace each line by this. You replace each segment of line by this figure, then you get that. Am I right? Something like that. Okay, I I drew this like twenty years ago. You know, for example, you can search for Xardi algorithmic math art. <clears throat> so you know, I also am very interested in these kind of things. So I drew. One of Bill Gasper's curve here, okay. I you know actually I saw this from a book. Was it from a book from an I for yeah? And I、uh, I think I coded in Wufan language or I did some yeah I think I coded in Wufan language. So so and、uh, I think you know anyway. So that's. That's that's this this is the Bill Gaspers curve, okay.、Uh, this one called Gasper curve or flow snake. That's the name I know by flow snake. Why is it called flow snake? Because it's a pun on the on another very famous curve. This this one Koch snowflake, you know. So this this one, it's a fractal curve、uh, with. Non-integer dimension, you know, very interesting. So when you if you study calculus and limit, you know, one of the issue is that you want to study how long is this curve. You know, this this curve is infinitely、uh, cringed. You know, so you want to use the technique of calculus to find out how long is the curve. That's one problem. The other thing you want to find out is what is the area. Of the of the thing, you know, Koch snowflake, very、uh, famous.、Uh, and if you are a programmer, you know, one of the most interesting to thing to do is to draw this. You know, you you can use Python or whatever to actually draw it. So I recommend you guys do it. Okay. So let's see.、Uh, so Koch. So say something. Say something,、uh, guys. Let me know. So Koch snowflake is very popular. So that's why this one Gaspers curve is called、uh, Gaspers flow snake. It's a it's a pun. So <laughs> lots of in. So this is this is kind of the what the hacker community do. Like the Unix, you have lots of puns. You know Unix commands. So anyway, this is very interesting. So that this is one of the Gaspers、um, creation. You know, and.、Uh, And、uh, lots of more, lots of more. So let's talk about、uh, game of life. Okay, I, let's talk about game of life for a bit. You know, game of life. I don't know if you guys know, but if you have not know it before, I highly recommend it. You look at it now. In the nineteen ninety, you know, it's a craze among hackers or nerds or computer programmers or mathematicians around. Late eighties and nineteen nineties, I spent several years, every every day, several hours, play pl kind of play this, you know. So. So Bill Gasper found many,、um, you know, 
made many discover discoveries in this thing, cellular automata. Okay. So let's see cellular automation game of life. So here is the article. You search for Conway's game of life on Wikipedia, and you will find this. Okay. So I'm going to so let's go over that a bit. Then you know that's for today's video. Let's go over game of life a bit. And then I'm gonna type these Bill Gospers identities in Wufam language just to show. So let's do the let's do the Wufam language first, okay? So in fact you have to understand what this equation means. You have to do kind of a bit trans translation, okay? So this is actually actually I did it yesterday, so let's let's save time instead of me just thinking about it it takes it it takes you have to think about it so here it is i typed it up okay so let's just type it quickly uh bill gospel's identity the first one okay uh wufam language okay so let's see if you can see it Okay, so I have to move this to the left. Okay, let's do it. Product, okay, first of all, product. So the product of two things, product takes two arguments. The second argument is the the first argument is expression. <coughs> the second argument is the range. So let's say from one hundred to two hundred, x goes from one hundred to two. Let's say one thousand to two thousand, and the expression is the expression is pi over two arc ten. Okay. I divided by two times octan. Octan is oct octangent. Okay. Then inside it is x. Okay. So that is the. Let's paste that. Let's evaluate it. So you can see it's a. Uh, it's a number. Uh, yeah, too many, too much, so many terms. Now, you know, there are 2,000 actually. So let's just reduce the term. Let's say 10, 10 to 20, okay? Uh, not that. Shift control, okay? So let's do it again. Now this time let's make it typeset. So in order to do typeset, control shift n. Yeah, there it is. Now shift enter to evaluate it. Okay. Now copy the copy the output. Actually we can just control shift n to make it uh, anyway. Okay, let's do it again and uh, copy the input now let's output let's force it to numerical results okay so if it goes if x goes to 10 to 20 the the answer is 1.6 1.64 something okay but bill gospel is saying that bill gospel is saying let's pop this out Okay, Bill Gospel is saying this, this, this time together is pi, you know, 4 raised to the power of 1 over pi. So let's, so Bill Gospel is saying 4 to the power 
of 1 over pi. Uh, shift enter, okay? So you can copy that and control shift control shift n to make it um, to make it typeset now we want the traditional form the traditional form involves the radical so so if you want to typeset in a traditional form control shift t and uh, it doesn't do that uh, there's a way to type that but um, I don't know offhand so but anyway so you can evaluate this so the result you know the pith root of 4 is 1.55 okay so you can see this number is close so if you increase let's say 10,000 x goes from 10,000 to 2,000 you know and time them together uh, you see now the result is 1.555 so it's getting closer to this to this what Bill Gosper claims so this is so this is amazing so so, but if you ask Wufan language to actually compute, it won't tell you, okay? So, because, for example, let's type it out. If you actually ask Wufan language to compute the... Uh, let me do that here, okay? So, it should be limit. Okay, so limit of this thing of this product and uh, the n the x should go from n to to n okay then x goes to infinity okay so this is how you type it this okay so let's paste in Wufan language okay Evaluate it. Uh, evaluate it. You see, it came out unchanged because it doesn't know the answer. Okay, so for example, we can copy again, Control Shift N to make it typeset, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, Shift Shift Enter to evaluate. It came out that way because it doesn't know the answer. So, but we have tried numerical, tried, we have tried to evaluate it numerically. We can see, you know, it seems correct. So that's the amazing thing about, about all these Bill Gospers identity. Okay, we are doing the first one. Okay, so are you guys still here? Say something, guys. So that's one of the thing. Uh, be all, you know very interesting. Now I like to ask you guys, th those of you you know who are into math or programmers, if you are a student, or if you are interested in Wufan language, this is a great opportunity to learn Wufan language and some mathematics, hands on. So the task I want you guys to do is to. Go over this page, this Twitterdom. This this is Bill Gospers website. Okay, you can see it for my talk show. I have a link, and uh, type this out. Type this Bill Gosper identities in Wufan language. So do that. Uh, that would be great, and then of course you can try to use you know try try to see if Wufan language actually know about these identities and you can then also try to evaluate these identities numerically so you can kind of check whether they are likely true or not 
you know, it's likely. I mean, this is you know from a math, from this great mathematician. So this is this this. I don't know, but I think this you know this are. Uh, I'm pretty sure they are not known in math communities. It's just something that's just he found. So okay, okay, type them out, okay, and you can uh, Twitter on Twitter. You can tweet to me, or you can. Um, you know, post it to Discord. I, I'm trying to collect them all, so you know, and maybe comment on, you know, and if you are a mathematician, a profession, professional mathematician, you could tell me. Uh, what are the significance? You know, like Bill Gosper, you know, he's a, he has, contributed a lot to. Continued fractions. Okay, that's another topic, and I don't, I don't really know much about them. Continued fractions. It's amazing. So anyway, that's Bill Gosper. Okay. Yay! Uh, homework. Yeah. Do the equations have a physical meaning, or is it just uh, what it goes towards endless series? It's, it's. These equations are not. No, they are not. They are just identities, okay? So let's go back to his equations. These equations are many, many of these math identities. I mean, Bill Gosper have discovered many of them. They are just crazy identities. The the most famous guy that reminded me, you know, Bill Gosper. When I see this, that reminded me is that very famous Indian genius. One of the greatest mathematician, okay, uh, Ramajaman. You know his name is hard to pronounce, but you can just search for Indian mathematician. So this guy, this some people might consider the greatest top ten mathematicians ever. Okay, he created you know, and this is back then you know like eighteen eighty seven. To nineteen twenty, there's no computers. There's no even pocket calculators. He created thousands of identities. Kind of, you know. So to me, to me, someone who don't know about this reminds me. You know, looks like that. So it's just like extremely complex. For example, you have this sum. So this. You know when you see this sum, this these are infinite sums. So this one, for example, this one d two four four is saying that if you add this, you know, k from zero to infinity, so you have to add infinite number of them. So, so what do you add? So this you know log squared, and k plus one over two. You know, over something k plus one over two minus log squared k plus one over k plus one. So, suppose k so k begin with zero. So you replace k by zero. So you got one term. Then you re then you do another with k equals to one. Okay. Then you do another with k equals to two. Then you add all of them together. Now k has to go to infinity. Okay. Not just one thousand. One million or one billion—that's not enough. Okay, you have to add them to infinity. Okay, <laughs> infinite number. So, in a sense, you cannot even do if even if you have the most powerful calculator. You know, like you can do it numerically. So this is mathematics. So you have to find theories to. You know, so this is part of uh calculus or analysis. So once you so you, you so you can then maybe prove this thing if you add to infinity it equals to this thing, which is negative pi over pi squared times log two divided by six minus four. Um, uh, this one is um, epsilon uh, zeta zeta or epsilon. Uh, and. Uh, Epsilon, that's a special function, okay? I believe so. Let's see, gamma function. Wait, is it what is it? Yeah, so this is part of why this is interesting because you have to figure out what this uh, zeta. I think is what is that zeta or epsilon or what is it? Zeta, okay. 
Uh, I believe that character is Greek Zeta. Yeah, Greek small letter Zeta, okay? <coughs> this character, okay? So, and so you have this Zeta function, you take the derivative twice, then you evaluate at zero, then times log two, then minus this <laughs> complicated thing. And then you see this gamma, those are, I believe those are gamma functions, yeah, gamma. So gamma functions and zeta, they, they are uh, special functions. For example, this equation is just amazing, like incredible, you know. So what is this? I mean, it's like even difficult to comprehend. So here you have the gamma function. So let me show you gamma function. Uh, gamma function is a special function, okay? So even if you studied calculus, usually you don't know this until you, you know, you do a master degree in mathematics, focus on analysis, then you learn. So here's a gamma function, okay? It's a generalization of the factorial, okay? So anyway, so so that's one of the example of the Bill Gospers thing, you know, Incredible, you know, it's, it's, it's just incredible. So, Bill Gospel, so when I see this, I don't know, so it reminds me of, you know, this this Indian mathematician. He's known for creating this whole bunch of incomprehensible equations that even the best mathematicians don't understand it, like, <laughs> you know find it impossible to understand. For example, here is one of the identity this uh, Ramanujan found. You know, it's nested radicals. So you have infinite nesting. Okay, so this is infinite nesting. You know, he just like, he's like some people say he's connected to God. You know, he just know. Infinite, you know, this is not just <laughs> an equation, it involves infinite radicals, you know, uh, so things like that. And this guy created a ton of them. Here it is another one, example, this integral. So you, here, for example, you have an integral that involves a product of infinite product, infinite number of terms. You know, this times that times that goes to infinity. So you have the infinite number of product, then you integrate them, then it's supposed to be e equal to this thing. <laughs> and on the right side, you see those are gamma functions, okay? So this is just amazing. So I don't know nothing about this uh, analysis. This, this, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not sure what kind of um, area, I think they are analysis and number theory, okay? involving infinite infinite sequences and series and 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 continued fractions like infinite nesting stuff so how did he find that using computers or maybe he's a bit crazy in the brain <laughs> both i would say so you know a similar question is how did this guy ramanujan made all these you know, impossible discoveries. So on this topic, Stefan Wolfram has wrote an article. You can, um, in fact, it's referenced it in Wikipedia, I believe. Yeah, there it is. So Wolfram wrote a kind of analysis of this Ramanujan guy, you know, talking about how is it possible? Why why is he able to do this these amazing discoveries? So there's a movie made out of it, you know. Um, you know, there's a movie made out of this. So I highly recommend you read this Stefan Wolfram's article. And basically, we are ex and and this is one of the most weird, amazing discovery. Okay, he says one plus two plus three plus four plus six. 5, 6 to infinity is equals to negative 1 over 12. Amazing, okay? 
on the surface, obviously it's false because you add a bunch of numbers, you know, how can it become negative fraction? It's like idiotic, some nut job, you know, but actually this has the, what, the most deep significance in mathematics. Okay, I, I cannot, you know, I cannot even explain it. So you have to, you know, you, you go read Wikipedia, you'll find this equation, you know, on the Ramanujan article, you, you know, just read it carefully. So, so this is amazing. So, you know, it has to do with, you know, I cannot explain it really. So, so Wufam's article tries in part to answer how is it possible this guy, you know, first of all, he give a biography, you know, he dig out where was he born, you know, like general bio biography, but takes research, you know, Wolfram, you know, Wolf, Stephen Wolfram did. So general biography about this guy, what kind of guy he is, what is he like, uh, and then explore into the question everyone is asking, how is it possible that this guy created these crazy equations? So to know that, read uh, Wu Fan's article, okay? So I think maybe that's it for today. It's been an hour. So thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Uh, next day, you know, next next video, we are going to do, uh, let's do cellular automata, okay? This amazing thing. Let me show you a few, actually. Xali blog, okay? Let me just uh, give you a taste of of the cellular automata. Okay, uh, where do we go? So let's go to. So there's a book, new book came out. <laughs> Bill Bill Gasper told me there's a new book, Conway's Game of Life. Okay, you can buy it, and it's also free online. But I want to tell you guys, you should, you must try it. Okay, so you just start by start by reading the Wikipedia article, Game of Life. Okay, start by reading Wikipedia, then you'll understand what's it about. Then I'm going to show you, uh, so where do we uh, go? Yeah, N then I'm going to show you some of the amazing things. Okay, so there's a program written in JavaScript you can try. So this is what Bio, uh, Game of Life is like, okay? It's a cellular automata. If you have not heard of it, you should. Okay, that's it for the... Um, what will the answer be in Mathematica? No, it won't, <laughs> it won't return that. You know, the one over, the negative one over 12, requires special interpretation, okay? Um, it requires special interpretation. But, you know, I, I, I can't really explain it because it's like beyond me, okay? So, and I don't, you know, I, I, I so I'm not the guy to ask. So you have to ask, you can actually, you can search, you know, first read Wikipedia on this guy to find, there's a name to that equation, okay? Then if, once you find the name, you can search the web. There's quite a few YouTube, I believe. Now be careful, okay? Because when you watch YouTube, you know, first of all, you will see lots of, you know, screenshots. Oh my God, one plus two plus equals two negative, you know, one over 12, I impossible. <coughs> With a funny face, you know, they, like clickbait. Many of the YouTubers, they, they don't know, they, you know, they're just bullshit. So you, if you watch YouTube, you have to be very, very careful who is talking. So I recommend you watch those professor's video on this. <coughs> so anyway, that's it. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Bye, guys. Uh, let's see. We could, we shut down in in a minute or two.
So let's see what I did here. Okay. So yeah, go to the site and try to type it in Wufan language. Okay, and you can do that by, you know, you just search for. So go to Xa, you know, just search for Xa Wufan language. You will find my tutorial and click on the download free. So here are the instructions. Uh, so you go to their website so you can download it. And uh, let's let me show you Wufam script. Okay. In fact, yeah, I want to show you that. So once you so you can download for free. Okay. It like it's like two gigabyte, one gigabyte download. Then, or you can just buy a copy. Okay. I recommend. Then what you do is, for example, let's type this uh, in Wufam script. Okay, let's copy that. So Wufam script works in terminal just like bash Python. Okay, there it is. So we start it and uh, paste. So there is a result. Now in Wufam script, you don't get the nice fancy type setting but you can let's see for example let's type this one four to the one over pyth power okay enter so you got this kind of ASCII type setting okay and similarly here okay so now let's say you want the numerical result of this one so we can for example type that slash slash n slash slash is a postfix notation just like unix pipe okay n capital n means give us a numerical result okay so copy that and here's a great feature so you can select by increasingly select syntactical unit it will expand okay copy paste it here Control, uh, did we copy? Control C, Control V. What? <clears throat> okay, so you need to copy as text. Uh, well, in, in terminal, in PowerShell, so Control shift v I guess. Wait, what is the paste? Okay, right click to paste. Enter. So you can see there's the answer. Now if we modify 1000 to 2000. Okay, so now it's 1.55. Okay, so you can do this in in the Wufan script. Live long and prosper. Bye guys.